Dakota if you want to. And well, I have to study a couple of weeks. That's fine with me. I work good on credit. <laughs> you know I keep coming back. <laughs> yes, I know you do. All right. Does everyone have one now? All right. John 1 and 1. We probably won't get much further than that tonight. I don't know. The Gospel of John was written between 85 and maybe 90, 95 A.D., somewhere around there, by the, uh, the Apostle John. The purpose of the writing of this book, according to Polycarp, was uh, John did not by any means. He, they were, there were three Gospels already written, by the way. And uh, he thought that was enough. By two or three witnesses, let everything be established. That's what the law says. But God inspired John to write the Gospel of John for the singular purpose of proving that Jesus Christ is Jehovah God himself in the flesh. Jehovah God in flesh. That was his message. His message was, Behold your God. Now, Genesis 1 and 1 and John 1 and 1 are very, very similar. Genesis 1 and 1, all of you that have, how many of you had Hebrew class with me? All right. Genesis 1 and 1, it says, Barashith, bara, Elohim, eth hashemayim, we eth ha'aris. Okay. And John 1 and 1 is, in rk ain ho logos kai. Let's read that together, okay? Greek is so much like English, it's easy. In RK Ain Ho Logos Kai Ho Logos Ain Pros Ton Theon Kai Ho Logos Ain Theos. Okay? Now it looks a lot like English, so don't be afraid of it. Can anyone here uh, rattle off the Greek alphabet for me? Roger? All right. Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, Zeta, Eta, Theta, Iota, Kappa, Lambda, Mu, Nu, Xi, Omicron, Pi, Rho, Sigma, Tau, Upsilon, Phi, Keep, Xi, and Omega. Aleph, Beth, Gamel, the death. You know, all that. <laughs> okay. That was Hebrew, by the way. That last part of it. Alpha, Beta, Gamma. We understand this because it's so common. Uh, Cindy teaches mathematics, and, and there are several Greek symbols or letters in mathematics. Okay, it, there are Greek symbols in medical terms. There are Greek. Most of the medical terms are written in Greek. All right. Most of the legal terms are written in Latin. Because the history of the Greek language is way back yonder in eternity, uh, not eternity, but in the early time of the Western Europe. and Asia Minor, a culture called the Greek or the Hellas, or Hellenic culture began. Originally, there were many local dialects of the Greek language. The dialects, the language of the dialects. This goes back nearly 5,000 years ago, okay? Then what we call classical Greek, which was a high form of Greek, was formed. When you look in your Greek lexicons, you will find it'll say Attic, it will say uh, Ionic or whatever. Attic is from Athens. That's the dialect from Athens. That's where it originally. The Ionic is Ionia. All right. Now these different dialects formed into the classical Greek language. By 330 A.D., Alexander the Great had conquered pretty much all of the known world back there. 330 B.C. Did I say A.D. or B.C.? B.C. B.C. All right. Now I meant B.C. No telling what comes out of my mouth. Thank you, Randall. That would be very important. By that period of time, 
Alexander the Great had conquered these, and all of the world at that time, that part of the world, spoke Koine Greek. In 280 AD, the Hebrew scriptures were translated into Koine Greek, and that's what we call the LXX or the Septuagint. Okay? From uh, 330 BC to 330 AD, the Koine Greek ruled as a language. Even the Roman Empire, the Roman Empire conquered what was the Grecian Empire and got it under its control, but the Roman, the Greek culture conquered the Roman Empire. What was the date again for the, the Koine Greek? The Koine Greek was 330 BC, all right, to 330 AD. Uh, the Bible was written. When Jesus spoke and preached, he preached most of the time in Koine Greek. The Roman coins were struck in Koine Greek, not Latin. Okay? The languages that were used at that period of time in Palestine was Aramaic, very little Hebrew, very little real Hebrew. They had pretty much laid their scriptures down. And they used the Septuagint. All right? The Hebrew Bibles were there. Uh, in 70 AD, according to Jewish history, they took one of the manuscripts of the Hebrew Bible and the book of Jasher and took it to Spain. And that was in existence until 1600, 1800 AD. Uh, there at Tiberias is where they had a great school of rabbis there by the Sea of Galilee that uh, put together the Mishnah. Um, going back to Greek now. Greek, you come up to 330 A.D. Jerome translated the scriptures, the New Testament scriptures in Latin, into Latin, the Hebrew Old Testament and the, well, the Greek Old Testament, I should say, and the New Testament scriptures. He did not differentiate anything about them. He just translated, he didn't try to find out whether something, whether a text was good or corrupt or whatever. He just did it. He just copied it all in there. Just threw it all together like goulash. Goulash is where you take hamburger and everything and they sew everything at it. You can think about it, you know, and then you end up with something. That's what he ended up with goulash, New Testament. That is called the Latin Vulgate. By about... Uh, 330 A.D. they had uh, pretty much tried to do away with the Greek New Testament. The Roman Catholic Church, what was evolving into the Roman Catholic Church, denounced the original scriptures and told people they could, could not have any scriptures at all. They outlawed the scriptures. And any scriptures that, 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 the only scriptures that anyone could have, it had to be in Latin. Latin was the language of the educated people, the doctors and lawyers. You can go on the internet, I believe still, and buy manuscripts, doctors and master theses that were written back then, and it's all in Latin. That was a legal language, that was the educated language at that time. By about uh, 1100, from about 330 to 1100 and something A.D., we have Byzantine Greek. Byzantine Greek. It, all te it tells you all of that in this little uh, Greek grammar that I wrote here. I'm just kind of rehearsing it by memory. And then we have modern Greek, about 17, 16, 17, 15, 16, 1700 to today. Modern Greek is not Koine Greek. Modern, modern Greek is not classical Greek. They don't know what you're talking about it. They don't know what their language means. When I was uh, <clears throat> up at Lone Pine the other day, I showed you a little bit of that. I was talking to different people and sharing Hebrew scriptures. And you'd be surprised the Jewish people don't know what their word, what the words, the roots of those words mean. Neither do the Jew, neither do the Greek people today. I'm going to go back into ancient times, and I'm going to bring in a lot of Hebraisms of the book of, of John. John is full of Hebraisms. 
The Hebraisms kind of hide the original meanings of it when you don't know what he's talking about. But to, to study John's writings, you have to know Hebrew. Simple as that. You have to know Hebrew. Now, John 1 and 1, we read it. In beginning, Barashith, the whole word in beginning is right there. Barashith means in the head, one of the, it, it, it's a plural word. That's an ancient lost Hebrew plural, Barashith is. It means in beginnings or in one of the beginnings. God created the heavens and the earth. Okay? In one of the beginnings he did that. But we're not talking about in one of the beginnings here. We're talking about in the beginning. Way back in in, in the book of, uh, not in the book of Genesis, in the book of Genesis we have the beginning of creation. In Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28 it tells us what happened before the material creation of God, that God had created spirit and angelic beings, and that he created somewhere back there, Bob Sheath, in one of those beginnings, he created the material universe, the heavens and the earth. But right here, we're not talking about that period of time. This is the oldest scripture in the Bible related to time or eternity. John 1 and 1 is. It's the oldest scripture in time related as far as the Bible understanding in time and time element is concerned. In RK, RK is locative, singular, masculine, first declension, now. And it's singular. In other words, when nothing else existed, way back in eternity when nothing else, all the way back there when there was nothing but God. What? In beginning. In beginning. Genesis is in beginnings. But it, this one is in beginning. Okay, in beginning. In beginning, locative, singular, feminine. Third person singular, imperfect, indicative, active. It comes from Amy. Okay? And it's down here in front of you. You can look at it. The literal translation of that is, he kept on being. Say it together. He kept on being. In beginning, he kept on being hologos. Now we got to stop at hologos. Ho is what? That's a definite article. It's nominative, singular, masculine, definite article. All right, what is the equivalent in Hebrew? Ha. Ha. All right. Now that covers everything in Hebrew, but this does not. You got masculine ho a and to in Greek. You got three different ways that you decline nouns, and it's in eight cases. In Greek, you have nominative, genitive, optative, locative, instrumental, dative, accusative, and vocative. Okay, that's eight cases in Greek. Okay, and all of those eight cases, you have different thus or different in art. There is no indefinite article in Greek. No, in, say that, no indefinite article in Greek. What is an indefinite article? A or an. Uh, there's a reason why I'm telling you that. Greek is definite language. In beginning was whole logos. Now, logos. In here I have uh, Kyle and Delish. This is Colin Delish's commentary on the Old Testament. You can't study the book of John or the Gospel of John without studying the Old Testament. It's impossible. It's not going to happen. If you do, you're going to miss out 99% of what John is saying. Okay? Now, Colin Delish, which is one of the best commentaries on the Old Testament except for mine. <laughs> Mine's better. And I think you know that, don't you? You read it with me through 50 chapters of Genesis, okay? But theirs is good. You have to know German, you have to know Greek, you have to know Hebrew and all of that to read Colin Delish. Have any of you ever seen this book? Any of you ever seen Colin Delish? This is the five books of Moses. There's ten volumes of this. And uh, anyway, as you can see, I did look at it. I always mark everything all up. He has a lot to say all the way from uh, page uh, 184 to 192 in this book. 
Now, I'm not going to read all that to you. But I'm going to read a couple of comments he's, that he's going to make. He says in here that Hagar met Jehovah Jireh. Now, I handed these out to you also. Some of you got them. The early birds got them, and the early the other ones didn't get them, okay? This is the uh, names of God. I just couldn't, didn't have time to do this any more than what I did. If you go to the discovertheword.com or discovertheword.drjim.com or study the word with Dr. Jim, right on the front page you can print one of these out. I'll try to do some more for next week. Uh, this is who we're talking about. It says here that uh, the word angel of Jehovah, the angel of Jehovah, or Adonai of the Old Testament, in uh, page well about page 184 and 185 186 and 187 it talks about that he said the angel of the Lord is none other than the word of the New Testament the logos okay He's not talking about Gabriel. When we're talking about the angel of the Lord in most cases in the Old Testament, it's talking about Jehovah himself. All right, Jehovah himself. The God of the covenant, Ha Ha Adon. Ha Adon. What does Adon mean? Or Adonai. King of king and Lord of lords the great God of heaven. When the modern Jews come to the word, come to this word here in Hebrew, I don't even like to point this to tell you the truth because it wasn't pointed. We don't know how to point it. That's a joke. It's just four continents. Wow, hey, wow, and hey. That's it. We don't know how to say it. But they refer to it as ha the var. Ha the var. Ha the bar. Now this is the way you spell that in Hebrew, right there like that. It's on page 180 in Brown Driver and Briggs and page 210 in Kohler and Bumgarner. They'll tell you all about that. Okay? Sometimes this word or the name Jehovah is referred to as Hashem. The name. Hashem. And the modern Jews call him Adonai. Wherever, whatever you do with this name, you're going to end up with Jesus Christ. I'm going to tell you that right now. It's going to go right back to Jesus. We could go into many places in the New Testament. Jesus fulfilled all of the Jehovah titles. Let's look at them. Jehovah Elohim. Genesis 1, 1, 2, 3. Did Jesus create the heavens and the earth? You go back to the book of Colossians. It tells you who did it. Jesus did it. Jehovah Adonai. Jehovah the King of Kings. Psalm 8. Jehovah Jireh. The Lord shall provide the same one that, that like we said in Kyle and Delish, the one that Hagar met, Jehovah Jireh. That means the Lord our shepherd. Jehovah Nissi, the Lord our banner. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our physician. Did Jesus, did he really heal people in his ministry? Why did he heal people? to prove that he was God the Son. Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah our peace. Jesus said, the world will give you what? Tribulation, I'll give you peace. Peace in heart. Jehovah Tiskanu, the Lord our righteousness. The Kaiosune in Greek. The Lord our righteousness. Jeremiah 23 and verse 6. Jehovah Mikadishken, the Lord our sanctifier. Does he do that? Did he? Is he our sanctifier? We looked in the book of uh, of Luke this morning. We were in Luke. We we, we studied that the Bible is a myth buster. The Bible is a myth buster, and we looked at that. And we looked at uh, Eliezer's prophecy. Jehovah Mikadeshkin, the Lord our sanctifier. Jehovah Sabaoth. In the book of James, James calls him. The Lord, our, our, the Lord of our armies. 
Jehovah Sabio. Now, we don't think much of him at that right now today, but he is. He's going to come back on a white horse in, in uh, uh, the book of Revelation, the 19th chapter, and we're going to look at that in just a minute. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is here. Jesus said before Abraham what? I am. I am. Jehovah El Elyon, the Lord the Most High. If you've seen the Father, he said, you have what? You have seen me. Jehovah Rohi, the Lord our shepherd. Psalm 23 and John 10 are absolutely just alike. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. John 10, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. Jehovah Husanes, the Lord our maker. Colossians tells us that in Psalm 95 and verse 6. Jehovah El Shaddai, Jehovah God Almighty. Was he God Almighty? Yes, he was. Jehovah Elohach, the Lord my God. El. El. That's El Shaddai. The mighty, the almighty El. El Elohi Yisrael, the God of Israel. The God of Israel. Jesus kept on telling Israel that I, in my word, in my word, in my word, in my words. El Olam, the God of eternal, or the eternal one. Emmanuel. Remember when Jesus was born. That means God with us. Isaiah 7, 14 and Matthew 1, 23. Jehovah Adonai Ha'adonaim. Uh... Deuteronomy 10 and 17 and go to Revelation now. Go to the book of Revelation real quick. That's the last book in the New Testament, you know. Revelation, the 19th chapter. Let's look at that. And we're going to see who we're talking about right here. Now, I'm going to tell you something. If you've got a Jehovah Witness family, friend, or whatever, if you go and take the Gospel of John, the first chapter, the first 20 verses, they cannot get around that in any way in the world. You hold their nose to the grindstone and they'll either convert them or make them mad one or the other. They cannot hold their own with John. John. Brother Alan Wagon used to tell, when he introduced me people, he'd say, that man knows Greek. He said, he can teach you the gospel of John and he said, a Jehovah Witness won't last five minutes with you after that. And I mean to tell you that my class, my students over the years, have converted more Jehovah's Witnesses than anybody else. Because the Gospel of John will do it. Verse number 11, I saw heaven open, behold, a white horse, and he who sat upon it is called Faithful and True, and in righteousness. Now do you see all these terms we just used? In righteousness he judges and wages war. Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord our righteousness, and his eyes are a flame of fire, and upon his head are many diademas. Diadems are different than Stephanos. Diadem is a, a crown that is worn. It is a streamer or a victorious crown, something that you've won in battle. Stephanos is something you get uh, by family, you inherit it. And he has a name written upon him which no one knows except himself. And he is clothed with a rope dipped in blood, and his name is called what? The Word of God, which means Jehovah. Jehovah belonging to God. And the armies which are in heaven clothed in fine linen, white and clean, are following him on white horses. And from his mouth comes a sharp sword, that he will smite, smite the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron. This is all Old Testament prophecy, people. And it's talking about Jehovah. And he who treads the winepress of the fierce wrath of God the Almighty. What is that? Jehovah what? God Almighty. Huh? El Shaddai. Jehovah El Shaddai. And then verse number 16. This is the clincher. And on his robe and on his side he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. If you go back to Isaiah 63, 1 through 4, on Brown Driver and Briggs, page 11 in that Hebrew lexicon, will tell you all about this word. All right? And uh, Deuteronomy 10 and 17. Zechariah 14 and verse 15. Genesis 15, 8 and 9. And on his robe and on his thigh is written, Adonai, Ha Adonai. That's what it is in Hebrew. Jehovah 
Adonai Ha Adonaim. That's who we're talking about. That's who John's talking about in John 1 and 1. If you don't get this down, you won't understand the rest of the book. Simple as that. And like I said, if you've got a Jehovah Witness friend and you want to really talk to them about scriptures, go to the scriptures. Learn John 1 and 1. Learn John 1 14. Learn John 1 18. And don't let them go anyplace else. Hold them to that. It'll either convert them or run them off one or the other. I have never seen anyone could stand up under that. No one has ever under, no false religion has ever under, stood up underneath this. No Muslim, no Mormon, no nobody, nothing. Jehovah's Witnesses are hard to deal with because they, tray, they t twist the Bible. But when you go from the original languages, you don't have any latitude or longitude whatsoever. None. Okay, none whatsoever. In beginning, he kept on being. Third person singular, imperfect, indicative, active. Imperfect tense, that means the continuing thing, you know. Whole logos, nominative singular, masculine, definite article. Nominative case, singular, in, per, in, in, in number, and masculine, and gender. Is God feminine or female, or feminine or masculine, or neuter? What is he? What's it say? Masculine. El Shaddai. I talked about the all nourish one. Oh yeah, he nurses like the breasts of a mother with her young. The word. Now to translate this correctly, we can't put word down there because that's a Hebrewism. All right, it's a Hebrewism. It is not word. How would you translate this? Ha the bar. Who is this? If you want to say Jehovah, that's who it is. And Jehovah in Brown, Driver, and Briggs is on page 218. You can look at that. All right? It's this person right here. This one. That's who it is. The unspeakable name. The Word. In beginning is the unspeakable name of God in person. And conjunction, page 208 in that little analytical Greek lexicon I've got right there. Whole logos. Then it says, now here we have a complete sentence and then we have a, a link, a link or a conjunction. And then it says, another complete sentence is right here. That's a complete sentence. But it ties it together. Alright, now, <clears throat> the word Davar, by the way, is on page 180 in Brown Driver Briggs and 210 in Kohler and Baumgartner. Then we go down to the next sentence. There are three sentences in John 1 and 1. And one is powerful. And it means something. It says that, that Jesus was the, he always existed, that he never didn't, he, there was never a time that he didn't exist. That's what's in the first little sentence here. Okay. Third person singular and perfect and dictative active all the way back in our eternity path. And then sentence number two in John 1 and 1. Whole logos, nominative, singular, masculine, and this is the subject. The Jehovah. That's who the word was. Okay? Let me read you one other little thing here out of Kohler and Bumgarden. Talks about Adonai, Ha Adonai. The angel of the covenant will come to his temple. The angel of the covenant. Or the angel of the face appeared to Christ, appeared in Christ. The angel of the face. El Pane means what? The face of God. El Pane Elohim. All right. The angel of Jehovah, therefore, was no other than the Logos of the New Testament, which not only was with God, but was God. He kept on being God. In Jesus Christ, when Jesus Christ was made flesh, he came unto his own. All right? He came unto his own. El Pane. Pane. The angel of his face. Pane. That's Pane. That means face. Right there. That's face. 
angel of the face. And what do you mean, the angel of the face? In other words, and we're going to get into that in this second verse, second sentence. The face means what? When I come up here and look right at your face, Brother Roger, what, I, what am I doing? Looking right into your face, right into your presence, aren't I? The angel of the presence or the angel of the face, okay? Do you see how much Hebrew did for you when you studied Hebrew to get to here? Okay, the angel of the face. The Jehovah, he kept on being pros. Pros means, prosopon means what in Greek? Prosopon is what? That means face. Prosopon, face. You could put the whole prosopon, all of it down there if you wanted to, but it didn't need to. Pros is a preposition, page 346. Okay. What it really means here is inseparably. Pros tone theon. Tone is a different definite article. That's accusative singular masculine. Second declension noun is theos. But here it's theon because it's accusative singular masculine. Nominative, genitive, obligative, locative, instrumental, dative, accusative, and vocative. Eight cases. We know exactly what this, if you took that word out right there, that tone out of a sentence, you would know what part it played in Greek without seeing anything else. That's accusative singular masculine. Okay? Definite article. And the and this is pointing, this this definite article is pointing at that and saying that that is accusative singular masculine. And that ending tells us that is accusative singular masculine. In other words, it's receiving the action. It's like a direct object, okay? We didn't need ace in here. What is the Hebrew equivalent of the sign of the direct object? Et. Et. All right. We didn't need it here. The Jehovah, he kept on being toward the God. How you would translate that is the Jehovah kept on being an inseparable part of the Godhead. Jesus never ceased being God when he became flesh. The only thing he gathered in flesh was his relationship to mankind. He became related to man, but he never ceased being God. Okay? He was in subjection to the flesh. Now the last part of the next sentence. The last part of John 1 and 1. Are you liking this? Is this okay? You learning something? You take this home with you and you're not ever going to have any more trouble with Jehovah's Witnesses. Chi here is not a conjunction. It is a conjunction, all right, but it's like a strong adversative conjunction. It's like Allah. You could use Allah here instead of Chi, but we didn't. It's like that's what you call a strong adversative conjunction. Or because. Because. You can look that up on page 208 in the analytical Greek lexicon, by the way. We start out because. Now, because is kind of a conjunction, it has a causative sense, okay? Because the Jehovah, Po Logos, now it's nominative singular masculine, definite article, nominative singular masculine, now. Okay? Now this goes into mathematics. We've drawn change from grammar to mathematics here real quick. Because the Jehovah, he kept on being Theos. Now look at this. And look at this. What case is that in? Nominative, singular, masculine. Number, gender, and case, this is this. And in the middle of that, is a mathematical equal sign, which is a linking verb. The logos equals theos. Number, gender, and case, they are the same person. Not a different person, but the same person. And the, and the Jehovah Witnesses try to put in a God there. That's an indefinite article, which there aren't any indefinite articles in Greek. Simple as that. Okay? <coughs> A God. A God. He's not a God. Now, this is what you call a predicate nominative. A predicate nominative means that 
the noun here and the noun here are the same person. The same person. Okay? And they have to be the same person in number, gender, and case to be a predicate nominative. So what do you have here? The Jehovah are the word, and we know who who is this word, by the way? Is this Jesus that we're talking about here? We're talking about Jesus, aren't we? The Jesus, the Jehovah, he kept on being the God. Now, here you have a definite article. Over here, you don't have to have a definite article. You sure don't have an indefinite article. Because you could take that and put right in there just like that. And there's no doing any violence to the scriptures because it's understood. It's what you call a practical substantive. Okay? The Jehovah, he kept on being the God. What? No. Kai is here is because, which is a conjunction. It's a linking word that links this to the rest of it. You could put it out all by itself. Because the Jehovah, he kept on being the God. The Jehovah kept on being the God. Not a God, but the God. He kept on being the God. All right. Hello, Brother David. <clears throat> the Jehovah, he kept on being the God. David, you don't have one of those books yet, have you? Yes, sir. Do you have the Gospel of John? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. The same print? The, the, well, yeah. <clears throat> now, we didn't say bara sheath bara, did we? Not in one of the beginnings, but in the beginning. So, this is the oldest verse in the Bible. John 1 and 1. Do you have any questions so far? Did we find out who Jesus was and who Jehovah was? Here he is. Right there. Yes, brother. I'm just curious about, I've always wondered, is, is, is this how the Septuagint started off with Genesis 1-1? Same word in, same the beginning? Yes. The Septuagint did, but the Septuagint was incorrect there. So did John sort of uh, take his cue from that and say, okay, this is what it really means? No, John took his cue from Hebrew, the Hebrew Old Testament, not the Septuagint. These are Hebraisms. Yeah, he is contrasting. But he's contrasting with the Hebrew, not the Greek. He's not, he is overlooking the Septuagint altogether. We, we talked about the Septuagint this morning in the class. We talked about the Bible is a myth buster. When you go to the original scriptures, it is a myth buster. It busts all of your ideas and all of the uh, present tense theological fads. The Word of God just takes care of all of it. Just washes it away. <laughs> all right. Anyway, we're, we just finished John 1 and 1. Now, uh, Christ fulfilled all of the Jehovah titles in the first few verses. John 1 and 2 now. John 1 and 2. John 1 and 2. Hutos, Ain, N, R, K, Pros, Ton, Theon. You got the idea? This one, that's what you call a donopsity pronoun. It's nominative singular masculine. Now, it doesn't have to have a hole in front of it, does it? Because we got it right up here. We got it right here. This one, we're talking about Jehovah. We're talking about Ha the Var. The Var is a Hebrew equivalent of Jehovah when they talk about the name of Jehovah Jehovah it's Hadavar okay and that's who and, and this book this gospel of John is full of Hebraisms get it in your head full of Hebraisms you've got to learn Hebrew before you can understand the gospel of John and you got to learn Hebrew before you can understand the book of Genesis too you people were in my class for 50 class 50 chapters in the book of Genesis from Hebrew did it change your idea when 
when Moses threw down the rod in front of Pharaoh, what did it become? A dragon. Did not become a snake. Did not become a Nahash, but a Tanin. Okay? That's different. There's a whole lot of difference there in there, isn't it? The difference between a slithering snake that a rod could almost look like and a dragon. A dragon. Like a large crocodile or a dinosaur. That's what hit the floor of Pharaoh. Now, modern people could under, could believe that, that staff becoming, becoming a snake a lot easier than it would be a dragon, couldn't it? But the Hebrew doesn't say snake. But all the translations say that. Over there in the corner someplace it'll say dragon. If you go back into the book, even in Strong's, it'll say dragon. The, the Latin is draco. That's the equivalent of that. And the Greek is draco. Makes a lot of difference, doesn't it? This one, this one we did, we did this one that was the one that created everything back yonder. That's who this one is. Colossians, the first chapter, all cross reference to this. I had on the first page there, you've got Colossians, you've got uh, 1 14 through 20, you've got Hebrews 1 1 through 3, Isaiah 43 and 10, and 45 22. Luke 4 and 8, Isaiah 40, uh, and 43 and verse 10 and 11, Revelation 1, 11 and 17, Revelation 19, 11 through 16, I think is where we went, and 22, 13, Proverbs 8 and 22 and 23, Zechariah 13 and 7, 1 John 1 and 2, Ephesians 3 and 9, Revelation 4 and 11, Philippians 2 and 6, 1 John 1 and 2. That's all cross-reference to what we've just done tonight. Who told us this one, he kept on being? This one, this Jehovah, he kept on being in the beginning. He, he continued to be exist before anything else was created. Not Barashith. Barashith is what? In one of the beginnings God created the heavens and the earth. Barashith, Barah, Elohim. In one of the beginnings, God created the heavens and earth. We're not talking about that. This is way beyond that now. This one, he kept on being in the beginning. He, he enforces it two times. So you can understand that he goes beyond Genesis 1 and 1. Okay? Proston Theon. He, back then, he was inseparable from God. Here he says that he was inseparable from God. And now again he says it twice. When, you, when God says something once, listen. When he says something twice, listen real hard because it's real important. Okay? This one he kept on being in, in the beginning, inseparable part of the Godhead. Look at that. Pros, ton, theon. Pros is a preposition, page 346. Ton, theon, accusative, singular, masculine. He kept on being an inseparable part of the Godhead. One in verse three. One in verse three. <clears throat> Panta. D. And the word D there is a contracted form of dia. How to. Aganito. Kai. Karis. How to. Aganito. Who they. Hen, ha, gagonan. All things by the agency of him. All things by the agency of him were caused to become. Were caused to become. This is very, be very beautiful here. Again, it's told. That's third person singular, second heiress, indicative. Indicative, middle, or passive. Either one right here. All things were caused to become. In Hebrew, what is this little word? Hayah, Asher Hayah. 
Exodus 3.14. Haya Asher Haya. I am that I am. This means, the root of this word means what? To become. This right here is the name Jehovah. What is the root of that? To become. Okay? To become. Exodus 3.14. Exodus 3.14. Let's go there quickly. I wish I had brought my Hebrew with me. But I think I remember it anyway. Exodus 3.14. <clears throat> Exodus. Exodus 3.14. How do you say the book of Exodus in Hebrew? It's different, isn't it? What is it? We ele shemot. We ele shemot. All right? And in Hebrew, our, it is we ele shemot. But in Septuagint, in Greek, it's what? Exodus, the way out. In Lakota, it is hantio, <laughs> the way out. But in Greek... It means totally different than what it does in Hebrew. In Hebrew, we eleshemot. What means what? And the names. And the names. And these the names. It talks talking about the names of Jacob. Okay. We're in that book of Exodus. We're in that book of we eleshemot. Okay. Exodus three fourteen. And God said to Moses, Haya Esher Haya. I am the becoming one. I am, I am. And he said, you shall say to the sons of Israel, I am has sent you to me. And verse 15 says, And God furthermore said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, The Lord God, Jehovah Elohim. Jehovah Elohim of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is his name forever. This is my memorial name. This is my personal name forever. And he didn't change it in the New Testament. And John is repeating and enforcing that so terribly and strongly to us. Isn't he? Have you got something the first few, few verses here in the Gospel of John? Isn't it flabbergasting? All things by the agency of him. That's genitive, singular, masculine, third person pronoun. How to? It belongs to him. All things by the way of him and from him. Where did the heavens and the earth come from? From God. They didn't come from ex nihilo, did they? That's Latin for the, for the Catholic idea of the creation out of nothing. <laughs> it didn't come out of nothing. It came out of God. Where was man? He was not created from the dust of the ground, but as he created the dust of the ground to become dust. And he made him in his shadow casting and his blood flowing and his spiritual likeness. All things by the agent in him were caused to become and outside of and outside of him of him out of him. That either can be genesis, genitive or oblative. That's, it can mean the case of possession or the case of origin. Either way. It can, be, it can be genitive or oblative. Again, there's nominative, genitive, oblative, locative, and instrumental, dative, accusative, and locative. Eight cases in Greek. And John's going to make use of all of them. And without him became ude. Nothing. Not one thing which has become. Which has become. Nothing. And that just goes right back to the book of Colossians, doesn't it? Right back to, to the book of Colossians. Let's go there quickly. <clears throat> Colossians. Colossians. Colossians is like the Gospel of John in the letters. Paul the Apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, Thelematos to Timothy our brother, and Timothy our brother.
It says, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share in the inheritance in verse number 12, and the, the weothesia of the lot, of the inheritance of the saints in light. For he delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us under the kingdom of his blood son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. And he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. That is wrong. Yet he is the head of of all creation. That's what it's talking about. Rosh in Hebrew, RK in Greek, the head of all creation. He wasn't the beginning of the creation. He is the head of the creation. He is the creator, the head of the universe, Isaiah 9 and 6, and John 1 and 3. We just studied that. For in him all things were created, both in the heavens, in the heavens, Hashemayim, and we at we are in the heavens and upon the earth visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him, by him, and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things are held together. He is the head of the body of the church. All of the universe is held together by Jesus Christ, by Jehovah that we've been talking about. You take the few verses that I've given you today, and it will make your faith stronger than ever. You won't be subject to Catholicism. You won't be subject to Mormonism. You won't be subject to Jehovah Witnesses. You won't be subject to any cult or isms. You won't be subject. You will be the master of your soul through Jesus Christ and his work. Okay? 1 and verse 4. Now, this in those people that here tonight that haven't studied Greek before, this isn't scaring you to death, is it? It because it's so valuable. In Alto Zoe Ain Kai He Zoe Ain To Fos Tone Anthropon. Now we studied and we used all of the Jehovah titles tonight. And John is enforcing in the first chapter of the Gospel of John that Jesus fulfilled all of the Jehovah titles. He is the Lord our Creator. He is the Lord our Sanctifier. He is the Lord our Savioth, the Lord of the armies. He is the Lord Almighty. In Him, locative, singular, masculine. In Him, third person pronoun. In, by the way, if you want to put page 137 down there before you look it up. In him life. In him, what is the word for life in Hebrew? Chaya. 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 In him is life. All life. And he spoke it into existence. And it came from him. In him life. It kept on being. In him was life and it kept on being. And the lie kept on being the light of the world. He was a creator, the creating force. We just were studying the Gospel of Luke on Sunday morning right now. We talked about the incarnation of Christ. When, when the Godhead covered Mary and impregnated her and God became related to the human race, Adam's related to dirt, isn't he? he isn't, Adam's related to all the stars. He came from the same element. So when he impregnated himself into this girl, he became related to all of the universe. And since he is our Goel, what does Goel mean? Goel. Redeemer. Kinsman Redeemer. Since he is our relative, he can redeem us because we are his own. We are related to him. Okay. And the life kept on being the light of the mankind. We got a word anthropology from that anthropon there. By the way, of the the light belonging to the mankind. Belonging to the mankind. One in verse five. John one and verse five. You know, I did the Gospel of John before, but I'm going to try to do it better now. 
<coughs> I am we'll try. <laughs> Kai Tofos N To Te Scotia Fane Kai He Scotia How to U Kata Laben And the light, phos. We got a word phosphorus from that. We got a word photo. All of that comes from this. And the light in the darkness, it shines. Literally, if you really want to put it down there, personally, he shines. In the darkness, he shines. Because who is the light? Who is the light we're talking about? The Shekinah glory of God. We're talking about the, 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 the Shekinah glory there in the tabernacle. He is that light. He is that light in Genesis. And it says, let's look there in Genesis 1, the first chapter. And I wish I had brought my Hebrew. <clears throat> Genesis 1. I'll just remember this from Hebrew. We ha aretz. Let's say that. We ha aretz. Hathya. Tohu. Wavohu. We hoshik. El pane tohom. And the earth she became. She became. Tohu. Formless and void. And what? And darkness had overcome her. Darkness was hoovering over the earth. Darkness. Who was uh, the original light carrier, carrier of the world? His name meant light carrier. Who was it? Lucifer. And he became darkness. And God recreated the heavens and the earth and he put a new administrator over his kingdom and he gave him a rod of authority and he said you guard that garden now the book of Jasher tells us that rod by the way that's according to the book of Jasher and according to all rabbinical and Hebrew legend when Moses and Aaron went before Pharaoh they took Aaron Adam's rod and threw it down there. They took the authority that God had handed to Adam. Okay. Now, the book of Jasher is a is a history book. It is. How do you say that book in the beginning? How, how was that? Sover Ha Yeshur. Sover Ha Yeshur. All he was is a scribe, a historian. He was not inspired, but he tells us the history of what happened. And the book of Jasher tells us. It said in the beginning, before God ever created anything, he took an almond branch that was going to be created. But he, he created all one, so he took this almond branch, and on that almond branch was a stone in the top of it. And in his hand he created the heavens and the earth. And he spoke them into this, this and he held this authority over it. And when he created Adam and recreated the earth, and light became, in verse 3, and God said, let become light. And light became. That's literally what it says. And when he put Adam on the garden, he handed him that rod, that symbol of authority, and said, you are the master of this earth. You are the administrator. Now take care of it and guard it. In that rod, according to Jasher and the Hebrew legends, there was a lot of power. And that's a rod that Aaron threw down according to Jasher, that became that giant dragon. And then Janus and Jambres, which the, the book of Jasher identifies, and Paul in 2 Timothy identifies. Janus and Jambres, which were Balaam's children, they threw down their rods, and what did they become? Dragons. But God's dragon ate them up. Because God's dragon was that symbol of authority that he created the heavens and the earth with. And this is the mighty God of heaven that we're talking about here in the John, the first chapter. 
and him was life. And it says, and the light in the darkness in the scotia. The book of Jude talks about scotia sophon, thick darkness. In the bottomless pit there dwells today some fallen angels and some fallen demonic spirits, spirits that are so powerful and so mean that God puts them in jail because they're, they're creatures of darkness. And in the darkness it shines. And who's, who's the God of this world right now? Satan. And boys, there are a lot of darkness out here. But this darkness, Jesus came down in here and he shined different than all the others. And thus darkness, it not it received. Cara Lombano. It was not fallen angels can't repent. Fallen spirits cannot repent. All mankind are fallen, aren't they? We're all born fallen, aren't we? But some believe and some don't. 1 in verse 6. 1 in verse 6. Aganito. Anthropos. Spes, spes ta lemme, spes talmenos. Para, theu, onama, autu, awanes. There became a man. There became a man. There was a time when John didn't exist, wasn't there? John was a very, a very, a very special man. He was born saved. Did you know that? He was born with the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb. He was Elijah that was to come. We talked about him this morning in Luke, the first chapter, verse number 63 onward to the end of that chapter. John. John became. And a man having been sent without with authority, nominally singular masculine, perfect participle passive, having been sent from beside God. That's ablative. Para there means from, that's a preposition, from beside God. The name to him, John. Onama. What's the word for name in Hebrew? Shem. Hashem is another term that they refer to Jehovah as. Hashem. Or Hadavar. And the modern Hebrew call him what? Adonai. But whoever he was, in any language, you've got to come back to one. Yet airplanes got to come in for landing, and it's Jesus Christ. That's who Jehovah is. That's it. One and verse number seven. Hutos, Elthain, Ace, Materion, Hina, Materesen, Materese, Peri, Tone, Photos, Hina, Pontes, Pistuosen, D. Altu. This one, who's it talking about here? Who's this one now? Who is the one we're talking about? John the Baptist. We're talking about John the Baptist. This one, he came. This one, this is a demonstrative pronoun. Nominative singular masculine. See that Omicron Sigma on the end of it? OS looking thing? That's nominative singular masculine. This one, he came. Third person singular secondary is indicative active. Unto a witness. Here we have the Greek preposition ace. What is the Hebrew equivalent? Et. Et. The Hebrew equivalent is et. Just like that. All right. The idea is extension or limitation of thought or verbal action. Through, beyond, behind, whatever. He came for a witness. In order that he might witness, we get a word martyr from this, that he might witness concerning Perry the of the light. In order that all things, all the ones, that is, all the ones, they might believe. Third person plural, first heiress, subjunctive active. How many times can you get saved and how long does it take you to get saved? Huh? One time? And it's instantaneous, isn't it? Now, 
If the Bible teaches that, it ought to agree with us, huh? Shouldn't it? If the Bible teaches that, it ought to agree with us. Okay? It's punctilious action. Not only is punctilious, first error is the most punctilious of punctilious action, okay? Punctilious. Point time. Knife blade point time, you are saved. That they might believe through him by the agency or the, by the means of him. I think I'll quit in verse number 8. Is that alright with you? You want to do one more, one more verse? Or you want to quit already? One more verse? Hands up. One more verse? Alright. Uk, Ain, Echinos, Tophos, Allah, Hina, Maturese, Peri, Tu, Photos. Not he kept on being that one. All right? It says here that John kept on being not the light. He wasn't the light. Okay? Not he kept on being the light, but in order that he might witness concerning the light. Who's the light? Jehovah. Shekinah glory of God. That's who he is. Let's go on to verse number 9 because we're still talking about the same thing here real quick. All right? We're going to go to verse 10. That's where we're going to quit. <laughs> okay? Is that all right? Ain to fos to alithinon ho fotize panta anthropon erkamenon aston cosmon. And he kept on being the light, and the light, this light is truth, genuine, authentic, alithinon. That, that means without falsehood, without lies. Aletheia means without lies. That's what it literally means, without lies. <coughs> Which, it lightens, it causes to light, third person singular, present indicative acting, it causes to light and keeps on lighting all the mankind. Which mankind? <coughs> all through the church age, it's going to keep on convicting people of sin, righteousness, and judgment to come. And he's going to keep on being the witness. John is keep on being a witness. His, his words are keep on being a witness <coughs> concerning that lie which he lightens all men coming unto the world system. Into the world system. 1 John 2 and 8 for all preference to that. 1 and 10. We'll start in 1 and 11 next week. Into Cosmo. Aim. Kai Ho Cosmos. D. Autu. Eganito. Kai Ho Cosmos. Auton. Uk. Egno. In the world, in the cosmos. What is this? What would be the equivalent of this in Hebrew? Hashemayim, thank you, Brother Randall. You got A plus. Hashemayim in Genesis 1 and 1 doesn't mean heavens, by the way. Barashith, Bara, Elohim, et Hashemayim. The word Hashemayim there means that it means the whole created universe. God created the whole universe. And we et Ha'aretz, after he created the whole universe, then he took the earth and placed it in exactly the right place. That's why it says, We et ha we et ha aritz. And he placed the earth in exactly the right place. And the whole world system keeps on existing. And the world he kept on being. And the world, by the agency of him, it came into existence. It became. It not was, doesn't get it, people, I'm telling you was doesn't work there. The world became through him. And the world, the world system, the world order, all of it, spiritual, physical, seen and unseen, him not at new. Him not at new. <coughs>
What is today anyway? What day of the month? Ninth? <clears throat> I see that I taught that I taught this in 5 10 1976 one time. <laughs> That's a long time ago. Do you have any questions? Or turn you loose on the world. David, good to have you here tonight. You missed the first part of it, which yeah, I know you would love. I was late. Yeah. But uh, do you have any questions? Next week we ought to have a gigantic class. I wouldn't even have the class tonight except that some of you were coming. And they had this thing here. <laughs> but uh, it's good to have you here tonight. I hope that you enjoyed the Word of God tonight. It's fantastic. The Gospel of John is a fabulous, it is a holy of holies of the Bible. That's all I can say. It's a holy of holies. It'll put more foundation under your feet than anything that you've ever studied. Now, how many of you, how many of you have got foundation under your feet from the book of Genesis? Raise your hand. How many of you ate that up? Does the English Bible any inkling? Nothing. It don't cut the mustard at all. It is not there. It just is not there. You study it from Hebrew, and we did 140 classes. <laughs> Boy, that was it was, and I loved every bit of it. I'm working on Exodus. We're going to start on Exodus. We're going to swap this one probably to Wednesday night if I. And Wednesday, when I'm, I'm working on First Corinthians on Wednesday night, I'm not finished with it, and I don't want to cut it short. We're in the 15th chapter. Brother David, would you come up here and dismiss us in prayer tonight, if you don't mind? <coughs> Let's go to the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that we have a opportunity to come and to worship you through the study of your Word, Father. We thank you that. We're still afforded this through through our nation, this freedom to to come before you and to know more about who you are, Father. We uh, we just thank you so much for Brother Jim and the uh, and the work, uh, his lifetime of work that he's done to prepare these messages for us on a on a weekly basis, Father. I just uh, thank you and, and praise you so much for your word, Father, and how how when we really get into studying the deep things of who you are, Father, how it convicts our hearts and uh, exposes our sin before you to make us more holy uh, before you to do your work, Father. We pray that as we go out into the world that we'll be able to uh, spread the gospel and to lead others to know who you are. In your precious name, amen. Amen.